Follow the instructions in this video to gather your evidence and prepare your case file. There are four different kinds of evidence you need to include in your case file. Footprints, fingerprints, handwriting sample, and chromatography. Let's look first at how to gather footprint samples. I'm going to read through the instructions on two different methods for gathering footprints and then demonstrate both for you. In method one, you're going to place two pieces of white paper just inside your door, then go outside and step in some dirt. It's probably best if you get the soles of your shoes a little bit damp before stepping in the dirt. As you come inside, carefully step on the pieces of paper making a footprint. Step once slowly from heel to toe onto each page. And then before you step off the paper, take off your dirty shoes right away so you don't make a mess and track dirt inside the house. It's time to go collect some footprints. First, I will place my pieces of paper right by the front door so they're ready to collect the footprints when I come indoors. Next, I'm gonna head out and find a spot with some dirt to walk in to get something to make the footprint on my shoes. step carefully heel to toe onto each piece of paper. Now I'm going to take my shoes off right away so that I don't get a mess on the floor. Method two, if you don't want to go outside and step in dirt, again start by placing two pages of paper on the floor. Then rub the soles of your shoes with sidewalk chalk or dust them with cocoa powder. Now if you're using light colored chalk, you wanna make sure that you put your prints on dark paper so that they'll show up. You should dampen your piece of paper with a light mist from a spray bottle. Now this is optional, but it works a lot better if the soles of your shoes are a little damp and or if your paper is a little damp to pick up the powder better. Then carefully place your shoe on the paper to make an imprint and press evenly from heel to toe as you would when you're walking. Again, importantly, clean the soles of your shoes right away so you don't make a mess in the, inside the house. You're gonna to wanna to use a bit darker color of chalk if you have white paper, and if you use a lighter color of chalk, you will want to use a darker paper so that the print will show up. You're going to rub the bottom of your whole shoe with the chalk. Now, my shoes are a little damp because I had been outside. And so that's actually really good um, because it's making the chalk adhere better and thicker. When your entire sole of your shoe is well covered in chalk, you're ready for the next step. If you likely want to lightly mist it, with some water from your spray bottle just to help the chalk to adhere better to the paper. Then when you're ready to make your footprint, place your shoe on the page carefully, starting at the heel. Press down nice and firmly and roll forward to the toe, just as you would if you were walking. And you will see you have a lovely footprint on your paper. Very carefully set it aside to dry. Now would be a good time to take a clear and close photo of your work. If you don't have chalk and you wanna use cocoa powder instead, you're going to need to sprinkle the cocoa powder onto a surface. Now I've chosen to put it onto some paper towel here so that I can dispose of what I don't pick up with my shoe. You want a light dusting of powder and probably spread it out nicely so that you get your whole footprint. You can see how this almost looks like just a nice thin layer of dirt like we would have gotten outside. To prepare my shoe, I'm going to mist it lightly with water.
just so that it's a little damp. You could also wipe it with a damp paper towel to make it damp so that it picks up the powder. Place the shoe, rock from heel to toe like you would do if you were walking. On this one, you can do it a couple of times because you're just trying to cover the bottom pretty well with cocoa powder. Take a look and see if there's any areas that you may have missed and make sure you get those nicely covered in cocoa powder as well. This shoe's looking pretty well covered. A little bit more at the toe maybe. All right, we're ready for our next step. Again, we want to prepare our paper with a very light misting of water. We take our shoe and we carefully place it on the page, rocking down from heel to toe as we do when we walk. You can see beautiful cocoa powder footprint. Make sure to take a good photo of this, but take the photo now while it's wet and clear. Remember, always take a photo of your evidence for your case file right away. These footprints often look a little more vibrant and clear when they're damp than they do when they dry out. So make sure you get a good clear and close picture immediately. We also have two methods for gathering fingerprints. The first method is a little more straightforward and a little more reliable. For this, print or copy out the fingerprint record page. On a piece of scrap paper, use a pencil to color a patch of graphite about five centimeters by five centimeters. You want it to be big enough that you can place the entire pad of each one of your fingers and your thumb on it and um, get graphite on your finger. Next, you're gonna place your fingers into the pencil mark one at a time. And as you go, if you need more graphite, you can add more pencil to that patch. Press each of your fingers after you've pressed it in the graphite onto a small strip of clear tape. And again, only has to be about five centimeters long or less, whatever is long enough to grab um, and cover the pad of your finger. Then carefully remove the tape from the tip of your finger and place it in the appropriate box on the fingerprint record page. Here's how to do method one for collecting fingerprints. You need your fingerprint record and really you only need one half of this page. We're going to use the top half and you want a piece of scrap paper where you can color with your pencil. You need a pencil and you want some scotch tape. So our first step is to color a nice big, let's say, five to seven centimeter patch really thickly on your scrap paper. We wanna put lots of graphite on the page, okay? Graphite is what's in the lead of the pencil. We don't use lead to make pencils anymore. We use graphite, which is a form of carbon. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take our fingers one at a time, we'll go thumb, index finger, middle finger, ring finger, and pinky. I'll start with my thumb. Press it nicely in the graphite. As you can see, I've got a lot of graphite on my pad of my thumb now. I want to take a piece of tape, scotch tape that's about five centimeters long. I'm going to place it on my thumb, press down, nice and firmly, then lift it carefully off. And this is my right hand, so that's my right thumb, so I'm going to place it on the page where it says right hand thumb. Oh, this is an excellent fingerprint. Now I repeat with the other four fingers, adding more pencil as needed.
Now, if you want to try dusting for fingerprints like a real detective, maybe you want to give method number two a go. For this, you want to rub your fingers together or maybe rub your fingertips across your forehead by your hairline, um, on your nose, or another area. You just want to make sure that your fingers are not super squeaky clean, so don't wash your hands first. Next, touch a clean glass with your fingers and you're not dragging your fingers along the glass or touching it over and over again. You're just touching it as if you're picking it up to drinking, drink and then put it down again because you want clear, non-smudged fingerprints. Then using a very, very soft paintbrush or a makeup brush, very gently dust some cocoa powder over the spots where you touch the glass, then carefully blow away any excess powder. Then you're gonna lift the fingerprint with a small strip of clear tape and place that fingerprint on the fingerprint record page in the appropriate box. Again, remember to take a photo of your evidence for your case file right away. Okay, now for method two on collecting fingerprints. If you want to try to dust for and lift fingerprints the way the police do. So you wanna make sure that you have a clean glass or other clean surface, a hand mirror or something would work quite well, some scotch tape and some cocoa powder. Now, if you don't have cocoa powder, you could use some chalk dust. So I'm going to show how to do that as well. And you want a darker color with that as well. So first step is to make sure that your fingers are a little, um, not the cleanest. So Rub them along your hairline, around your nose, whatever. Rub your fingertips together just to make sure that you have those nice natural oils um, and dirt there in your skin like you would normally have. Now, you don't have to go out and get dirty, but just the kind of natural dirt that you collect in a day. So don't freshly wash your hands and try this one. Use it with your hands as is. Now we're just going to pick up and touch the glass. Not a ton, but just enough to hopefully leave behind some fingerprints. And you can maybe see some cloudy spots where I touched this nice clean glass there. To dust for fingerprints using cocoa powder, I'm going to just put a very, very small amount of cocoa powder on the page only need a tiny amount now the kind of brush that you need for this should be very soft so a very 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 soft paintbrush if you have one most people don't have soft enough paint brushes so as you can see i'm going to use a makeup brush makeup brush works quite well for this and you know a nice this is just occurring to me a nice foundation powder or blush might work well um, instead of cocoa powder, if you happen to have that around your house. Now, if you're using somebody else's brush, make sure that you ask for their permission first and ensure that you're going to clean it thoroughly when you're done. So we wanna get a little bit of powder on our brush and we are now going to dust our glass to see if we can adhere to any of those fingerprints that I hopefully left behind on there. And we'll try a little bit with the chalk dust as well. So we're going to color quite hard to leave some dust on the page. Pick it up with the brush. Oh, that one is working really well to be able to see them. You can see my fingerprints coming up there. We just want to dab this on gently until we can see those fingerprints showing up, which we can see quite well now. And then we find one that we think is a nice looking fingerprint. I see one right here that looks really good. And I'm going to use some tape. Okay, I'm going to take about five to seven centimeters of tape, just big enough for the print stick it on, press down, and carefully lift. Now I can place this tape on my fingerprint record. Hopefully I remember which finger made the print. 
We have one method for gathering handwriting samples. For this, you're going to write a sentence called a pangram. This is a sentence that uses every letter of the alphabet at least once. It gives investigators the opportunity to see how an individual writes each letter of the alphabet. You'll start by using your standard writing. Write this sentence on a separate sheet of paper or a cue card. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. Now you're going to write the sentence again using all capital letters and then one more time using only lowercase letters. And if your first sentence when you used your standard writing is not in cursive handwriting, give it one more go, this time in cursive handwriting. When we write with cursive, we have a lot more joins in the letters and a lot more loops, and it's just a lot more interesting to analyze more different patterns to look at that way. So make sure you write it at least once in cursive handwriting. And again, remember to take a photo of your evidence for your case file right away. Our final evidence sample is the ink chromatography. There's one method for this, so follow along these instructions. Cut a coffee filter or paper towel into a strip that measures about three centimeters wide by 10 centimeters or longer. About one to one and a half centimeters from the end of the paper strip, color a dot or draw a line with a black water soluble marker. Secure the strip of paper to the inside of a glass that has about one centimeter of water at the bottom so that the strip of paper just barely touches the surface of the water. Wait five to 10 minutes and record your observations, including the brand of marker that you used. Again, remember to take a photo of your evidence for your case file right away. Up next is chromatography. For this activity, I need a black water soluble marker, scotch tape, or something that I can use to secure my paper to the side of my glass, perhaps a paper clip, but scotch tape's quite easy. Some white paper towel or a coffee filter and a tall glass with about one centimeter of water in the bottom. The first step I need to do is to get my test strip. So I'm going to cut a piece of a strip of paper towel, or if I had a coffee filter, I would cut a strip from the widest part of the coffee filter, because when you flatten them out, they're shaped like circles usually. And I'm going to make it about, I don't know, about five centimeters wide. And just the length of this sheet of paper is fine. So this now becomes my test strip. And what I'm going to do with my test strip is to color a line, or you could do a dot of a marker along the bottom about one centimeter up from the bottom. I think I'll do a line because I have a nice chisel top marker. So not too much. You don't want to ruin the table underneath, but enough to have some ink on your test strip. Now take a small, piece of tape that you will use to secure your test strip in the glass. And when you're putting the test strip in the glass, you want to make sure that the bottom of your test strip just touches, just barely touches the surface of the water. It's going to wick the water up quite dramatically. So you just lower it in until it just touches the water like that. And then you can fold your strip down and secure it to the glass with the tape. And we will leave this now for about five to 10 minutes. And once the ink has wicked all the way up, we will come and record our observations.